Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to another day. It's time to talk mules and donkeys. You know it is that time. 3 p.m. Arizona time. My time in the world. Steve's time in the world. What time is it in your part of the world? Uh, it's mule and donkey time. That's what time it is. We're so glad that you're here spending another week with us. My name's Dave. This is Steve Edwards. And every Tuesday we get together to talk mules and donkeys, answer any and every question that you've got, and, uh, and, you know, maybe today we'll do some surfing lessons. Maybe today we'll do some coral scuba or uh, snorkeling lessons. I just found out that Steve Edwards is a surfing man. Steve, you're a surfing man. Yeah. I, when I was a kid, I was at a, at a, um, we had movie theaters, outside movie theaters. Yeah. And you, you pulled up to a pole and you put a speaker on and you listen, you watch the movie, you know? Well, I was uh, I was uh, uh, a lot boy. And I had me a white smock, and I had me a a uh, telephone. I mean, one of them flashlights with a glow mm -hmm. on it, you know. And at that time, I was a surfer. Man, I had long hair. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. And a bunch of cowboys pulled up in a pickup truck. And that night, they did their best they could to whip me really good to make sure they understood that I was not going to be. A surfer around them cowboys. <laughs> a cowboy ever since. Oh my goodness! All right. Well, I think we're going to need some pictures here in the uh, not so distant future. I, I do think folks might uh, might kind of enjoy that. That'd be a lot of fun. Speaking of pictures, uh, we always love getting pictures that you all have uh, of your mules, of your donkeys, and there's no better picture we love to see than that picture of you getting results with your animal. Hey, we just worked for. You know a couple weeks on this or hey you know I was they didn't used to do this and now they are and it's so exciting or they used to do this and now they don't and thank you Steve like we love that so always always be sending in your pictures we would love to see that and maybe if you send in some pictures of uh, your uh, Mueller donkey in the younger days Steve Edwards will show us some pictures of himself surfing in the younger days uh, like I said my name's Dave this is Steve and uh, there's really only three things you need to know about today. Uh, well, first and foremost, that this is live. We are live and in person. It's June 27th, 3.03 p.m. Uh, and so, yes, we are here. You can talk to us on the chat and we will respond. Uh, but as far as interacting, the first thing is we just want to know that you're here. So in that chat section, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, go ahead, put your name where you're watching from and what the weather's like. And if you take a look, you'll see folks are already doing that. That's how we say hello around here. That's how we say howdy. And even if you're watching on the replay, we would still love to know that you're here and uh, be able to say hello to you um, whenever you wind up watching. So name, where you're watching from, what the weather's like. The second thing we ask is that you go ahead and put in that comment section any and every mule or donkey question that you have. Why? Because if you've got it, somebody else either has that question or is going to have that question. If you don't ask it, you're not going to get the answer. And even worse, people in this mule and donkey community, they won't get the benefit of the answer too. You're here. It's here and now. You're present. Go ahead. Ask the question. Uh, there's really no bad question at all. There's no question that we've answered too many times. I, I, I think the topic we talk about more than just anything else is feed. And Steve, I, uh, I was corresponding with someone back and forth this week and just was telling them like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you said something about feed. Like, I think we've talked so many times about how animals, mules and donkeys need to stay in their own 10 by 20 stall. And you don't want them to leave them out at pasture. You don't want them to have all of that, quote unquote, free feed. Uh, they can't handle it. They can't handle uh, on their stomachs. They can't handle it with their energy. They, they can't handle it from a nutrition standpoint. But so many times, folks who have been watching for however many weeks or months, they ask that question. And that's just indicative of go ahead and ask that question because somebody else is going to need it, whether it's now or in the future. So any and every mule or donkey question that you got, put it in the comment section. Now is a great time to do it. The third thing that we ask is that you share the broadcast uh, with friends or family or other folks in the equine community. You know, Bill does a good job sharing the mules of Ohio and Indiana. Bill's awesome. Be like Bill. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Uh, on YouTube and Facebook, it's real easy. There's a share button, and so you can send the link to anyone and everyone. 
Uh, there's also a like button, which tells the algorithms, hey, this is pretty good. And then there's the comment button where you can tag friends or family members. So I'm going to go ahead, say hello. Actually, Steve, uh, what you've been up to since we spoke last week? It's been a whole week, and uh, you're, you seem to be busier and busier uh, every time we talk. No, actually, I'm kind of getting caught up here. I, I need to get my trailer <coughs> lined up. Susan and I got our 55th anniversary coming up here and uh, in, in uh, July 10th, be 55 years. And so we're going to take our little uh, Marriott Inn on wheels and we're going to go up the mountains and uh, maybe cook on a campfire if there's campfires or lettuce and uh, kind of enjoy the cool up there just a little bit. Go over to the lake, do a little fishing. That's what we're going to do. We're, we're getting caught up around here. Most of the, most about everything I'm doing now, we're doing some landscaping. Uh, I, uh, I got a hot tub out here in back. It's called a clamshell. And boy, let me tell you, at the, at the end of the day, that's a beautiful thing. And the first thing in the morning, when I feel like a wadded up piece of paper, I head there too. I, that's uh, it's a great deal, but no, I'm, we're pretty much caught up around here now. We've been working pretty steady for two months, painting houses and everything else, but we're done. Awesome. Well, maybe, uh, maybe that means we'll have a little bit more time for mule and donkey questions. Let's do it. Uh, Ashley is watching from Minnesota. The weather is smoky, hot, and cloudy. Um, that's pretty much how I describe my uh, high school years. Smoky, hot, and cloudy. Uh, horsey Girl, Julie, is watching from Kentucky. Nice weather. Hannah from Dunnellan, Florida. 91 and hot. Uh, I sure hope that I'm hot when I'm 91. Uh, Johnson, Sherman Johnson, Johnson Taxidermy. Norman, Oklahoma, 90 degrees. Dave O'Brien, East Texas. Hot, hot, hot. It will be hot, hot, hot. Uh, let's see here. AZ Highland Homestead. Howdy, y'all, from Prescott, Arizona. I'll bet the weather's nice up there. Sunny, dry, and windy, 85. Yeah, that sounds nice. Emily is watching hot and muggy in North Carolina. Born 100 years too late, watches, says... What? I can't turn them out to pasture? Just got here. Might be hearing it wrong. Okay, let's make that our first conversation of the day. Steve, can I leave my mule or my donkey out to pasture? Hey, Dave, this is what I want. This, this is what, who, who was it that said that? Can't, what? I can't leave my animals out? Anyway, this. It was born 100 years too late. So they're just okay. now showing up here. Okay, born here. Here's the deal. I want you to start eating starting tonight. I want you to go to the smorgasbord. And for the next month, I want you to weigh yourself before you go. And for the next month, I want you to eat out smorgasbord every meal. Every meal for the next month. And I want you to weigh yourself after you have eaten there for a whole month. You're going to gain weight. Yes, sir. Old fat boy here knows, I'll tell you. Now, let's go back. Mules can't stand prosperity. And I'm sure Dave is going to put that link down there. Now, <clears throat> here's the deal. When they're out there, they have the body of a horse and the foot of a donkey. They also have parts of them that are fat pockets. And we've got some pretty serious pictures of some people with mules with fat pockets. <clears throat> There's a little thing called grass founder. Yep, grass founder. And it can get so bad that the heat actually goes down through the leg and fluffs off of uh, a hoof, an outside hoof wall. It can be really bad. And you can see fat pockets really heavy. Uh, folks, they don't need to be out there. They don't need it. And I know you're thinking, oh, it's so good to see them out there on the pasture. And they look so happy. You know what? They, they are happy because they don't have to deal with you. Yep. It's up to us. Let's, let's go back. We're a predator. They're a prey animal. Now, it's up to us to take care of them. When you look at a road apple in that corral, you'll know what that road apple, how it looks. And watch the consistency of it, the color of it, how much moisture in this sort of thing. You can see how much water they're drinking. You can see how much that they are urinating and this sort of thing. And therefore, guess what you've done? You're able to take care of the weight and the health of the animal because you're feeding them an approximation of what they need for feed every day. 
they don't need to be out on a smorgasbord eating. Now, you're thinking, oh man, well, you know, they're an equine. They, they, they chew all the time. They eat all the time. Yeah, you know, you know the reason? Because you see their teeth, they, they grind their feed, grind their feed with this their teeth. They grind their feed. They bite it with their incisors and it goes back in the molars and they grind it. And when they grind their feed, that makes their intestines all work very good. So <clears throat> when it comes down to the feed, if we feed them what they need, not what they want, then that makes a big difference. You don't have to worry about grass founder. You don't have to have an over, and that's the problem is these mules can, they can grow weight on air. So take your time, feed them correctly. Now, when do I change feed? When I go and I'm going to ride this day, I'm gonna ride six, eight hours. I'll bring a, a, a morale of, of uh, grain. I use whole oats, whole oats, W-H-O-L-E, oats. I'll feed them whole oats. They can eat all they want as I am saddling them up. And folks, once I put a come along rope or a halter on that mule, no more eating. We're done. Unless I say it's okay in the morale, not in the saddle, not eating grass down there. Yeah, you, you, all you're doing is developing problems. It's every week almost, Dave, I think we hear that somebody says, my mule's eating along the trail. Well, yeah, you've already allowed it. So now you've got to fix a big problem. So let's go back. Here's the last thing. Everybody says, well, it's kind of cruel being in a little 20 by 20 stall, isn't it? No. My wife's mule passed away at 28 years old. We had her from a two-year-old. I started, she spent 26 years in a 20 by 20 stall. Good and healthy. She worked all the time. We, you know, we was always training with people and this sort of thing, pulling wagons. She was good at that stuff. She was very good. But we feed, we fed her accordingly, and we was able to keep an eye on her water and her feed. In other words, we took care of them. It's up to us to take care of these animals, and we got to feed them properly. Now, here's the last thing: <clears throat> when they're out there in that pasture, they don't need you. They don't need you. They're out with their buddies and stuff. What do they need with a predator? I have seen it time and time again. Matter of fact, I just had a lady just call me the other day. She's had a mule for two years. Mules always came to her, always da, 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 da. Well, she finally, she bought a Shetland pony. So it would be his pasture mate. Now that mule won't leave that Shetland pony. You don't need to do that, folks. They don't need a pasture mate. They need you to be the herd leader. And there we go. So follow-up question. Um, so born 100 years too late says, but moving around is good for their intestines. Sure it is. They can just move around in circles and figure eight right there in that 20 by 20 pen. They don't need to go up a mountain to do that. They don't have to have 20 acres to do that. They can still do good around in there, okay? They can do just fine. Yeah, so our whole deal is we're going to tell you what's worked for us. We're going to tell you what we what we advocate. You get out there and try it, and if you see uh, improved behavior, which most folks do once they get the uh, – one of the things is how do I catch my mule on my terms? Well, if they're out in pasture, they don't need you. They've got their buddies. They've got their food. They've got everything that they need. Why would they come to you? And so catching them winds up being a big problem, whereas when you move them to a 10 by 20 stall, you become the herd leader you become the one that they're looking to for everything and they need you at that point. So it's all right if we agree to disagree, but we really appreciate you giving us an opportunity to share uh, why we think the way that we do and why we say what we say. So thank you so much, Born 100. Uh, Ashley says, I definitely want to see surfer pics from Steve, for sure. Jim is watching from Western Maryland, 65 degrees and rain. Mary is watching from Northwest Missouri. Wayne says, Wayne here in middle Georgia, don't even ask, way too humid. Lane says, help me with ground tying when I pony the mule and the rope has to be dropped, she takes off. What would you say here? You got, you got the, the ground tie taken off. What would you say, Steve? Well, you don't have your foundation squared away and your timing. It's always our timing how we're gonna do. Now look, on the end of that rope, there's a knot. And on that knot there, 
when when you when you get them to where you can drop it on, the rope on the ground, they will stay there. But it's going to be up to your timing to teach them that if they if they even flip an ear to the right, you're going to wiggle their nose because you see it makes their nose uncomfortable when you move that rope, and they don't want to do that. So uh, when it comes down to it, it's your timing. And I can tell you that everybody at my superior clinic when they were doing them. We were doing the ground tying and everybody was doing great. They hooted a holler at their mule, other mules moving all around and their mules didn't want to leave. And it was their timing. So it has to be that when that rope goes on the ground, they understand they, they don't want to see it move. So if they take off, you need to go back and do your foundation work again and make sure it's right. Just think the smallest thing, the smallest thing. So they even look to the right. Or they even flick an ear. You're going to wiggle that rope. There you go. Awesome. Next question. This one came in from Vic, uh, Vicky. She posted it on Facebook. She says, thank you for being willing to help. I just adopted two mules and do not have much information on their history. I really wish I knew their ages. Any reliable way to tell? Um, real quick, Steve, is there a reliable way to tell the age of a mule or a donkey? Oh, yeah. Yeah, really easy. Uh, matter of fact, you can go online and just put on there how to tell the age of an equine. <clears throat> and your mules and donkeys are pretty much going to be the same. Once you kind of get a feel for it and you've been doing it a long time, you can just pull up the gum and look at the front teeth. Or you can you can pull up the gum on the, on, on the uh, left-hand side. And you can look, look at what's called the Galvin's groove. And it's a main groove coming off of one of the incisors on the very end, it looks like a sharp point, hmm. a, a dark colored. There's a lot of things you can find uh, and do. But the main thing is, here's the thing to do. Get your teeth floated. Get the teeth floated. Then when, when they're floating the teeth, they can tell you how old that animal is. And okay. here's the problem. Oh. Here's the problem. Every mule is between 12 and 15 years old. Why is that? That's the key point. My every, the mule's got all this experience. He's middle-aged, and horses the same way, folks. So when these when these guys and gals that sell you mules, now they're traders, uh, and they tell you he's a twelve-year-old. Yeah, he was probably twelve years old ten years ago. There you go. So what am I looking for right here? Like what what should I be well, taking? You're looking at length of teeth. You know, the length of teeth was one thing. And you're also looking at the how it's touching the bottom teeth as well. But <clears throat> so you probably got about a, mm, I won't say about a 14 year old mule there. I need to look at the Galvin's groove, which is the tooth that is on the right hand side. You can kind of see that dark color coming down on that right hand side. Mm -hmm. And that, that groove on the far right hand corner, you, uh, you've got, is it like the right, right hand corner? Yeah, there you go. That's called a gallons groove. That dark color going down that white, <coughs> and and <coughs> when it's when it's new, when he's just a, when he's under ten, you can see it just start to come down, and then as it changes, it'll call it'll get the gallons groove, and there'll be a notch, and and it'll <coughs> hold on. There we go. Hey, that's a nice looking cup you got there. You like that, huh? Well, I like that all right. I bet the guy that made that cup is watching us right now. to see if he'll own up to it. Yeah, let's see if he'll yeah. let's see if he'll own up to it. I like that. You yeah. watching? It, anyway, so it, it's not real rocket scientist to look at teeth, but if you look at teeth, the older the the older the animal, the more it's going to go out like this. And that's when they call it long in the tooth. Okay. So at first, the young colts are like this to him. And as they get older, it gets goes out more and more and more and more and more. And you get longer in the tooth. Awesome. Uh, so moving right along with her question, uh, these, these two that I adopted, they were at the rescue for three months and getting a bucket of equine senior each day as feed. I was told they got grass hay also, but never saw the amount, kind, or quantity. I visited them three times before they came to my house last week and their behavior was the same in both environments. The female, confident and calm, the main, untrusting and anxious. Maybe he is a henny. He is always 
he always has a worried look unless I have convinced him to let me rub his ears and then he will drop his head and relax. I received the foundation kit. Good for you. I ordered and I know it will help me be successful, but I want to make sure I get the right diet along with the communication and exercise. I weighed the senior feed in a bucket, filled to the top is 11 pounds of grain, and it has molasses, so I know I need to change this, but since they are still showing ribs, I'm not sure how to proceed. I have a round bale of coastal Bermuda hay that was cut in my country, Aiken, South Carolina, last month. The local feed store recommends that a triple crown balancer, which is basically just a half cup of vitamins and minerals, is the only food. This would be a big transition from 11 pounds a day, so I am not confident what a good plan is. Yeah, folks, uh, they don't need a bunch of grain, and they especially don't need molasses. Uh, You'll see that animal, uh, the one that's a little bit offish, you'll see him change within about two months if you take him off of that. Now, you know, the ribby and this sort of thing, yes, I understand that. Whole oats is the best way to start putting a good top line on them, but exercise is the biggest one, you know. Uh, if you're going to be feeding them a, a real good feed like that, uh, they'll they'll read the article called Mules Can't Stand Prosperity. Read that article. I had an article, I, had a, I mean, I had a feeding program all set up for this mule, and the mule was doing awesome. And then one day she calls me and tells me this mule is a blithering idiot. And I said, well, when did you change feed? She said, how, how did you know I changed feed? I said, because the type of, the type of attitude that he's t- talking about, looking for monsters, uh, <coughs> not trusting things like this. Those are all red lights that says you've been feeding me grain. You've been feeding me high, high carbohydrates. <laughs> well, I got something bugging my throat here. You got an important message, and that enemy wants to come and get you. Yeah. There we go. I got that thing. Yeah. Anyway, um, so feed, your feed program is really important. Now, I think if you read that article, Mules Can't Stand Prosperity, here's the problem, Dave. You and I know this, is that people say, well, he's doing okay today. Yeah, he's doing okay today. Just like I had a lady contact me here a couple, a couple few days ago. She had a morbidly obese mule. She says, my, my nice little mule that just I can do anything with, I've had for two years. Now it's trying to run me through trees and trying to brush me off. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. So I see number one, no breaching, no rear cinch, saddle setting on top of the scapula. Other reasons? overfed 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 so that all has to change you know you're going to have to especially not having a breaching especially not having a back seat back uh cinch now why is that because that saddle within a matter of minutes is setting on it creeps its way forward and gets right on top of that scapula i've got another client that has white marks clear across the scapula this long and there again Placing a saddle in the wrong place. What's the other problems? Feeding too much carbohydrates. Yeah, feed is connected to so many different things. And then just yep. small adjustments can correct a lot of problems. i got a question here from Renate. It says, how do you stop a mule from eating donkey poop? I don't know if that's a joke or if that's... No, unfortunately it does. Folks, it, it, it would amaze you. When if you do an a- analyst uh, on on your road apples, how they uh, how there's really still a lot of nutrition in there. Uh, a lot of our camps that we've had out in places, we've had the the deer and the elk and this sort of thing come in and uh, and eat the the road apples that the mules put down. Uh, here's the thing: your mules are probably telling you they are lacking in some of their vitamins and minerals. Sounds like it's zinc, but you won't know until you do a blood test or until you do a hair follicle test. Then you'll be able to tell what vitamins and minerals you're loose on. That's it, folks. That's the whole thing, is the vitamins and minerals that I need are completely different than what my wife needs. And I know Dave that won't be as pretty as me, so he ain't gonna take those vitamins the same either. (laughs) So. Let's go on back here, all right? Let's go on back. 
when it comes down to these vitamins and minerals in this feed, your mule has a different at metabolism than a horse because he's got the donkey. And so when you're feeding these animals, you have to feed them according to what they need. Now, I'm 74 years old, and I used to think, man, I need to gobble down the food. And I used to flat foot it down, but not no more because one day I woke up, and guess what happened? Hmm. You ready, Dave? My chest fell to my drawers. Okay. <laughs> my, my chest fell to my drawers. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Another question here from Renata. Uh, it's beautiful 101 day in Tucson. Mimi, my mule, is probably 18, and I've had her a year. She's very skittish, even though I'm the one she trusts. Someone mishandled her. You're shy, not trusting of anything. Anything. Once you get on her, it's a beautiful ride. How long does it take for her to trust me? Well, there again, let's go back to nutrition. Let's get the nutrition going good. How long does it take? Who knows? I tell you what, I've had uh, one mule by the name of Tom. And he was a three-year-old when I got him. And... Uh, Boy, he, you know, I used him doing all kinds of stuff and pretty good little sorrow mule. And matter of fact, a friend of mine bought him and took him to Arkansas and used him at a kid's camp there. But to the day he passed away, that mule wouldn't hardly trust anybody but one person. And it was one little girl that he had trusted more than anything else. And that was my, my friend's granddaughter. And uh, you'll find some of them like that. Man, they're just great in the saddle. They're great. But they don't want to be your friend. Just go to work and that's it. So there's not really a time frame. Don't feed cookies and things like this to get them to be your friend. Uh, you know, pet on them, brush them, clean their feet, things like this. But m most likely you're not going to see a real change in that animal because that's the way that animal was bred with that type of mother. Okay. And not that they've been abused, folks. I have seen abuse be in all kinds of ways. And the mule still goes. Let me just give you an example. And, and this is right out of nature. The lead mare, she pins her ears and tells that young mule not to come in no closer. And that young mule keeps on coming. So she pins her ears and she swishes her tail. And that little young mule keeps on coming. She spins, bites, kicks, and thumps him to the ground. That little mule followed that mare around for the next years of, of her life. Everywhere she went, that little mule went. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't that mule just get beat up? Yes. But that is the way of life when it comes to equine, you all. It is. Your little slap or your little maybe whack with a board don't mean nothing compared to what these animals will do to each other. Biting and kicking, you and I couldn't even begin to 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 take one bite let alone one kick and they can take it with these so i said i'll say this yeah there's a possibility of some some abuse but most likely it is the it is the mind frame because of the mother of this of this horse of this donkey meal i mean and so it's the mindset and so you just you're not going to change it you just go ride and enjoy but just prepared be watching him all the time. That's what I did with Tom. When I got off of him, I made sure I, I had kept track of him the whole time, held on that range of stuff. Because if he get a chance to sell me out, he, he, you know, he'd do it. He'd darn sure sell me out and take off running away, you know. Next question. This one comes in from Laura. She was watching our broadcast from last week, week which, folks, I normally don't say, hey, go back, watch this broadcast, go back, watch that one. Last week was a great program. It just, for me, uh, I, I don't know if it did for you too, Steve, it just flew by. It was yeah. great conversation. The questions were fantastic. There was just a really good collection of different topics that we addressed. So go back and watch the broadcast from last week. Laura did. She says, "Thanks, thank you for all the great information. Every comment and answer has answered many of my questions and gave me great insight to future adventures with my mule. Five days home and such a difference in him. However, my alpha mare and gelding are very jealous of my mule. They are curious of the mule. They are in separate paddocks. Only issue, 
Mule has weaves installed. Any suggestions? The issue Mule has he Mule has he weaves installed. Any suggestions? Yeah, what he does, he's back going back and forth at the gate. Okay, okay. He's weaving, weaving like this. <laughs> it's no big deal. Folks, he just wants something to do. My two Shire mules, Tom and Katie, 17 hands high and probably 1,500 pounds a piece. Big old pair of, of uh, solid mules, black with white stock and legs, you know, out of a Shire, you know. And, and you know, I, I, feed, I feed once a, a, a day. I feed everything at night. <laughs> and the next morning, we're ready to go to work. I don't wait around to feed breakfast or something like that. I feed them all they need all night. They eat all night. They drink all night. They drop their road apples. Next morning, they're at the gate ready to go. And Tom and Katie, that's the way they were. And, and other animals that came to me at different times for training, we've been back and forth. Okay, come on, let's go. We got a job to do. Let's go get it done. Don't worry about the weaving. No big deal. Uh, you can get some of them that will walk up and down that fence line and do it endlessly. That's okay. You ain't going to change it. Not a thing you can do to change it, and it's not worth all the worry. Just go enjoy. Uh, Judy is watching from a wet Wyoming. Uh, let's see here. Bill says, sharing the pages in Ohio and Indiana. 73 degrees, cool and very cloudy with all the smoke from Canada. That's right. Uh, let's see here. Hannah says, Steve, you worked your wife's mule daily going places. What if they do not work often? Okay, now, it's not that they worked daily. <clears throat> there was times that they would be on a hot walker. There was times that they'd be on a sur single out in a round pin. <clears throat> there was times that maybe I used them as a animal to teach somebody to ride. Yeah, okay. So, and if they stand around, then I don't feed them accordingly. But if they're working, I add feed to them. I give them more feed depending on their work. And I watch them. I want to see a little rib. And I don't see a little rib. I'm concerned because they're getting fat pockets. So, uh, you know, if, if you feed your meal according to your work, if you work it three days a week, feed that grain during that time frame when they're working. Not Don't just put it in their feed bucket and go off. It's when they go to work that morning, you give, put it in their feed bucket, they eat it, then you put them in the harness and go, or put them in the saddle and go. But they all, you feed them according to how much they're standing or how much they're working. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Karen is watching from Central Virginia. Great weather here. Happy to watch live today, and we are good to have. We are glad to have you here too, Karen. Um, Ashley is watching. We went on an eight day trip and we let them graze at night, five to nine hours of work a day. So a lot of working there. So they need the extra feed then at that point, don't they? Yeah, they do. You know, even the carbohydrates from the, from the grass would be fine if they got something to do. You know, if you're going to graze them out all night, but <clears throat> what we do in our cow camps is, uh, we turn all of our remuda loose. And uh, we keep a, a few back in the in the corral, and they graze all night. And then they come in for their grain, you know. And that's how we that's how we chummed them in. They got to where they'd all we'd shake the a grain can and say, "Come on!" And they'd all come in. We use the grain. We didn't give them a lot, but we give we give them the grain so that they would come in. And then we take our, our animals. We're going to go to work that day. We grain them and then go, you know. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Merlin's watching from Northwest Minnesota. A little late, but made it. About 80 degrees and sunny. Uh, Bill, year, Bill says uh, 22 years old. So what was he replying to? Uh, very cloudy smoke. What did, 22? Oh, mm, I'm not sure. Bill, what were you saying 22 years old to? Myra is watching from Southern California where it's 72 and sunny. Uh, Virginia, or Unger is watching from Virginia. It's 76 degrees, and we are in dire need of rain. Send the rain. Send the rain. Cowboy Ken is watching. 73 degrees, cloudy in Connecticut. Hey, Mackenzie's here. Good to see you again, Mackenzie. Uh, this is Mackenzie, the guy from West Virginia that bear hunts off mules. Your saddle I got uh, off the mules, mule saddle I got. If you're doing, if you are doing great, whoever says you can put horses tax on a mule... Mule never rode in your saddles. There we go. So he's saying he loves it. 
Whoever said you could put horse tack on a mule, they don't know what they were talking about. They never rode in your saddle. Thank you, Mackenzie. Good to hear from you. Katie is watching from a hazy northern Illinois from the Canadian wildfires. Unger says, what are your suggestions for encouraging them to stay single file in the pack train? Now, I'm assuming he's talking about mules and donkeys and not kindergartners. So what would be your suggestions for encouraging them to stay single file? Single file. Well, a well-adjusted well halter for one thing. And then folks learning them, teaching them how to, or learning from them, which mules walk a little bit faster than others. You know, a lot of times we'll put five in a string and we have our swing animals, which are the three in the middle. And then we have our whip mule, which is the mule in the back. And then we have our lead mule, i.e. the youngest one that we're training there. So we put them in accordingly to their walking abilities and get along with the other ones. There's not really a way to keep them from, uh, from weaving in and out and not staying straight in the line other than a real small trail. Uh, and I can tell you, I put muzzles on all of my mules because if you've ever been in some of the wrecks that I have where the rope got down, got hung up on a back foot, it can be quite the wreck. Uh, let's see here. Actually, matter of fact, it's about a little bit over halfway. And so I just want to say hello to everyone who is hanging out with us. If this is your first time, we're so glad you're here. My name is Dave. This is Steve Edwards. Every week we get together to talk mules and donkeys. Our hope is that you will get the information that you need. So when you get out there and you start working with these animals, you will gain their trust and you'll get the results that you're looking for, uh, whatever that might be. And so uh, there's really only three things that we ask in the instructions or rules or guidelines or whatever you want to call them. They're real simple. Number one, so that you share your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather is like. We love meeting new people. Uh, we love connecting with you. A matter of fact, earlier this month, Steve was in Montana, Superior, Montana. And uh, I think almost all, if not all, of the people uh, there at that event were folks that we met through this program here. So we'd like to meet you too. Put your name, where you're watching from what the weather's like, we'll love to say hello to you. Second thing, ask any and every mule or donkey question that you got this time here is set aside for you and we wanna make sure that you get what it is you're looking for. So put your put your uh, question in the comment section and, and we will get to it. And then the third thing that we ask is that you share the broadcast, you click share or like, or you leave a comment, tag friends or family members, uh, that's the way we keep new folks coming in and we get folks uh, educated on the mule and donkey and the differences from the horse world. We want to make sure that they're not frustrated, but they're flourishing when they get out there and start training. Uh, Polly is watching from Barnesville, Minnesota, 76 degrees and nice. Katie says, I have a donkey uh, deathly afraid of water or any other darkness on the ground. Any suggestions? I have used the come along rope with slight success, but it is so prevalent. You see, mules can't see, and, and horses can't either. They don't blast over top of it, but <coughs> they, they don't have depth perception. So to give you an idea, I've taken in my clinics a four by eight sheet of plywood, painted it white, and then put a black circle in the middle. They think it's 40 foot deep, I think, but they, they cannot perceive depth. So it's nothing unusual. So this is what I usually do. I've got my hole that I want to cross over. Okay. Now, if it's just a little tiny thing, folks, you're not doing any, any good. You get yourself a tarp to start with a four by eight sheet of tarp. And you go, go by the tarp as you're going toward it and you feel them kind of hesitate, turn and go to the left. Then they can see it with their right eye, right brain. Then you turn back and go to the right. Now they can see it with the right eye, right brain. So then you go right, left, right, left. And as you're walking, you'll turn them into it. And as you're walking, you'll turn them into it. And then pretty soon they'll get to where that depth that they're not, that they're being so worried about, they can kind of see with their eye and get a feel and they'll cross the water or they'll cross the, the, uh, the ply, the, uh, four by sheet of uh, plastic. So that would be my suggestion is to start there, use the come along hitch, but folks don't try to get them to cross a little bitty hole. It ain't going to happen. You know, they will jump it left and right because they figure their foot can slide in it. 
Uh, Joyce is watching from Florida. Myra says, what would cause my Molly to be very cooperative while in halter, but will always bolt as soon as the halter is off? When untied, she is very reluctant to be friendly, even when she seems to want to. Yeah. <clears throat> well, she's just not a pet. You know, if she was a pet, she'd stick around, want to be her ears rubbed and this sort of thing. But no, she wants to go back out. Now, you turn her out into a pastor or you turn her out in a 20 by 20 pen. So that'll be a good question there, Myra. Let us know. Uh, do you want to come back to it, Steve, or do you want to keep talking? About yeah, we can come back to it. Yeah. Okay, we'll come back to it. Uh, Unger follows up. It's when they stop, they want to come beside each other, not when they are moving in the pack train. Oh, okay. Well, then then it, that could be a couple of different reasons. One, it could be because they're, the one behind them is pushing them up. And two, it could be that maybe your, your uh, lead rope is coming off of your back of your pack saddle or too loose. Or your halter is adjusted too high where it's not making any pressure upon their nose. So you might want to take a look at that. Um, I, I've fixed that a couple of times by using a, a, uh, a slingshot and uh, take a slingshot and ping a small stone across the, between his eyes there and that'll get him back. Bing! Bing! Uh, you talked a little bit earlier about rope halter. Um, you had said something about single file rope halter. Get it. I'm going to get my rope halter and I'm going to adjust it to this mosquito. That's right. I can do it because see folks, my halters are adjustable and you can adjust it to different sizes. So I'm going to get this mosquito all going and <clears throat> yeah. All right. Got it. All right. Got the halter on him. <coughs> now I can lead him around a little bit here. Watch him. Watch up. Oh, oh, there he goes up high. Oh, I've been back down. There we go. Got him in good shape. Hey, so, do you have the video of my Israeli cowboys? Yeah, I'll bring it up here in a second. Uh, real, real quick. We talk to folks a lot. Of, hey, just take the halter. Put the halter on the wall. Uh, you're not really going to need that a whole lot unless it's a specific thing. But then you were talking about this. I think it was the leading in a in a single file. You said use the halter right yes okay, okay now, now why would you start using the halter there okay here it is because you can't put a surf single on on five different animals going back because that's a lot of pack animals going back so they've graduated where they're listening to the come along hitch and they're not wanting to push against it and they graduate to the halter which must be adjusted correctly because if they go forward they need to have their nose bumped Okay. And so therefore it's what you would do uh, with a properly adjusted rope halter. So when you're tying mules tail to tail to head all the way around, they have to have rope halters at that time. All right. I'm still looking for the video. I've, I've got it. I, I just sent it to you just a minute ago. Oh, you sent it to me again? Yeah. Just, just about maybe 10 minutes ago. Oh, okay. Greetings, think... gr greetings from Yuri from Israel. I, did you text it or did you email it? I emailed it. All right, I'll look. Um, I'll let's do it again. Uh, no, I'll, I'll I'll have to check. Um, kind of working on the fly. Um, thank you very much for the good info. Unger says the oh the teeth picture of the mule looks like twenty years old unless it's receding. Then add seven to ten years is what Bill was talking about. Joyce says weather is hot, too hot for this time of year. Amy's watching from Colorado, hot ninety five degrees. I have a mule and a donkey, and I'm trying to learn all I can. Love your saddle, Steve. You and your store have been a great resource. We love hearing that. Thank you, Amy. Appreciate that. Uh, Jay in Wilkesville, Ohio. Overcast, 70 degrees. My mule wants to blow up when you go to get on him. But once you're on him, he seems to be pretty good. I would love to try one of your saddles, but I would like to try it out before I buy one to see one which one suits uh, my mule best. That's a great question, Steve. Which of your saddles, how can you tell which of your saddles is going to be the best fit for your uh, particular mule or donkey? All of them. All of them. My, every saddle I got fits every single mule. I have one tree only. 
And that one tree is on my trail light, my trail rider, my ultra light, my cowboy, all of them. That one tree works out just fine. I might suggest, Dave, to send him a link to uh, mastering the saddle fit and let him set, see, see where I fit everything from a 13-2 pony mule upwards to 17-hand per trunk. Yeah. Yeah, we can. We'll do that. I'll get that here in a second. Okay, here's here's the video right here. Okay, for folks, this is in Israel. The man on the right hand side, see, see, he's riding that mule. That's Yuri. Now, when I first met these guys, these mules were dragging them into the arena. And after one week of training, they were standing on top of their mules waving the israeli flag so this is this he's not a trainer it's just using my techniques to train and look how far he's come along he can, that mule he can do anything with that mule and see that flying that flag and that mule just taking it right in no problem at all you know so so folks can can you do it yourself yes you can like i said yuri's not a professional you know uh, and, and look what he did with his mule and did a wonderful job. Notice he's riding on, on flat ground and he's riding with a breech and a breast collar. Notice his son, who's riding like most horsemen do, no rear cinch, and watch the back of the saddle come up and down on that horse. It's crazy. <laughs> hope, hope Yuri's watching this. So uh, we're, we're sending a lot of stuff to Israel right now. That's very good. That, that video is great. Folks, if you're not following us on Facebook or YouTube, you are missing out. Make sure you uh, subscribe on YouTube and make sure you follow on Facebook. Um, Myra says, uh, so she was saying, what would cause my Molly to be -co very cooperative while in the halter, but bolt? Um, then she says down here, I moved her to a 2020 pen uh, about a month ago is what she says. Okay, now let me give the cue of the... Of the uh... I want to give the cue of the saddle because the guy is moving, the, the mule is moving when he's getting the saddle. But let's go to Myra first. Myra, you have your come along hitch on, not the rope halter, come along hitch. You go through the gate. You turn around and you face the gate. You're now inside the corral. You close the gate. You stand right there and you scratch and you pet on that mule. The mule is facing the gate. The mule is not facing away from the gate. You and the mule are right here by the gate. Yeah. <clears throat> You're going to pet and scratch, pet and scratch on that mule. And when he starts lowering his head, you are then going to take the come along hitch off. Or if you have to be using a halter that day, Folks, or even a bridle. When, this is imperative. Imperative, because what Myra's ex experiencing right now is because we just pulled the halter off and let him go. No, no, no. You leave first, the mule leaves second. And this is the stages that you're doing right now, like I'm just telling you. When you see them lower their head, then go ahead and take the come along hitch completely off. Push the gate open, go through the gate. The mule leaves second, you leave first. Practice that. Because right now, that mule is saying, I don't respect you. You're not the herd leader. And I know, Myra, you've been doing a better job than that. Okay? So you, you uh, don't allow that mule, folks. Never go through the gate and then open them up and let them take off running. I have several clients that's been kicked by their animals because the mules are going, Hooray, I'm free. I'm away from them meat eaters. Yeah. So anyway, enjoy. Try that. Let me awesome. know how you do. Awesome, awesome. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Vicky is watching from Aiken, South Carolina, 88 and humid. Unger says, why not a nylon halter just for packing? That squeezes the nylon thing. halter creates too many problems. It's big and wide. It does not, it does not communicate crisp and clear like the rope halter does. 
you adjust the rope halter to key places on the mule's head so that the mule will have respect for it. I have seen a lot of mules because of the metal on those rope, on those uh, nylon halters, rub the bottom of the cheekbone. I mean, rub them raw, especially in a trailer or if they spend all night tied to a trailer or a high, a high line, uh, they, get, they get pretty nasty. The problem with the nylon halter is it teaches bad habits because it does not create pressure points to tell them don't look to the right, don't look to the left, don't pull back and see that's what we're getting a lot of now because of the nylon halters. Uh, let's see here. Polly says, love that, a slingshot. I have used that for one of my mule in a four up to get her to move up, only hitting her butt instead. After a while, all I had to do was say her name. Yeah, and, and that, that works good. Uh, as long as we're talking about driving and using a slingshot, I use what's called a belly slapper, all right? Now, you Teamsters that are driving multiple lines, uh, you're gonna take on the, on the belly band, you're gonna have a big ring, about three inches. And then that big ring is gonna be attached to a leather strap. And that leather strap is going to have lead in the middle and leather on both sides of it and then riveted together. And then another ring with a rope, a quarter inch uh, uh, clothesline rope, because we don't hear about that anymore, do we? Clothesline rope, I don't think I did. Huh, how about that? Anyway, quarter inch rope. And then when you sit back in the, in the seat in the wagon, the, the, the belly slapper is hanging like this. And then we attach the rope to this end. The other end up here is on a belly band with a ring. And then when we speak their name, Tom, Katie, step up and then they get the idea you you uncle bud hated it when he seen people take lines and do that he said that's not a teamster that's just a guy trying to be in the movies uh let's see here cruising right along uh bruce is watching from uh new Braunfels, texas hot and dry i gave the cup to steve i hope it keeps his drink cold in this hot weather mr bruce owned up to it Bruce, he, uh, he lined up. Actually, it was he gave it, but I think his son made it. That laser engraving stuff is real cool. Isn't it nice? It's real cool. Yeah, that's that's really nice. It's uh, yeah. Now ask him if it, if it was his son that done it or his son-in-law. So that wasn't him himself. There you his go, son. Bruce. Let us know. Sharon says, "Would this training work for my mammoth Jenny?" I'm in Virginia and looking forward to the Tennessee show end of July. Hey, real quick. Yeah, that's right. Steve's going to be in Tennessee, uh, Shelbyville, Tennessee, for the American Mule and Bluegrass Festival. This is the second year in the row uh, that Steve's going to be there. I think this is the second year for the event. I think this is the third year. Third year. Okay, so third annual American Mule and Bluegrass Festival. Uh, Steve went last year. He's going again this year. Uh, Steve is out there to support uh, the veterans. This uh, this event, the proceeds of the event, uh, go to support the different funds that the festival partners with as it relates to supporting uh, our veterans. One of the really cool things that they do is they have veterans, and correct me if, if I get any of this wrong, Steve, but they have veterans who you know they partner up with and they will uh, hear their story, they'll listen, uh, to the tales they have to tell, and then they will write songs that are original, uh, capturing uh, just the the uniqueness of the story. It's really, really cool. So Steve's going to be out there. Uh, it's going to be at the end of September, running through the 1st of October. I'll put a link in the comment section. Steve's real excited to be out there. But Steve, would the things that we're talking about today work for a mammoth Jenny? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You got to remember that half of that mule is is a horse. The other half is Jenny, donkey. Uh, and so, yes, everything that you see me talk about is about the donkey uh, and is about the mule. You can use it. And I've even had people, uh, yes, you can use it even on your horses, you know, uh, because <clears throat> it's more natural of the way they're thinking. And that's kind of helps you out a lot. 
All right, so we've been waiting the entire time. I didn't know if it was going to happen. I thought we might get to a point where it just was not going to be a reality for this show. And uh, I was going to be sad. I was going to be a little bit disappointed. But Steve, Trace is chiming in from Queensland, Australia. We've gone international. This show, once again, has hit multiple continents. And we're so glad that you're tuning in. Trace from Queensland, Australia, 54.5 Clear Skies. Myra says, thanks, Steve. I'll wait for a lowered head and then walk away. Yeah, everything with these animals is, like, every second is training with these animals. They're yeah. learning every single minute, every single second. They're picking stuff up. And so you just got to be aware of the cues that you're sending and the things that you're not sending. So that's great. Yeah. Um, Bruce says, David. my son-in-law, Aubrey, is the one who did it. Ah, and he did a great job, too. Yeah. So I, I've got a hard close today. I hey, go wait, through. that's it. That's That was the last yeah. comment that we had. So we're good for so today. I got something to share here. Uh, a very, very, very good friend of mine has gone home to be with the Lord. Evidently, uh, the Lord needed a mule skinner up there, and he got one of the best. And this best is Ron Clayton. Yeah, uh, very good friend. And uh, Ron ran the mule barn up at the Grand Canyon for several years. Vietnam veteran, served our country, family man, and a man that loved Jesus. And his son put on a Facebook so that we, all, we would all know. We knew he was in his last days. <coughs> so... But the good thing about it, Dave, he knew where he was going. You know, that guarantee of having a savior, not a religion, paid off right here in Ron Clayton's life because he knew a savior. He didn't know a religion. So thanks a lot, folks. Appreciate you a bunch. Yep, there's the Grand Canyon. It's, uh, they got a Ron Clayton I've been. of Grand Canyon uh, <laughs> yeah. documentary here on, uh, on YouTube. And you That's can Ron Clayton right there. Yeah. How cool is that? That's great. That's real cool. Well, folks, yeah. thanks so much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate you being here. That's right. Uh, you can you can uh, know religion or you can know the Lord. And if you want to know the Lord and know what it is to leave religion, just let us know. We'd be happy to share with you the good news of Jesus. Uh, we hope that you'll come back and hang out with us next week. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with us this week. And uh, get out there, enjoy your animal, let us know how we can help, muleranch.com if you need anything uh, between now and then. Steve, we'll talk to you next week. All right, buddy. See you later. Bye-bye. See you all. Thank you.